Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of two 20-inch light bars. So, before I get into it, by no means am I trying to put any sort of product on blast. I just happen to have two 20-inch light bars from two different companies that I'm gonna be installing on my Rebel. So I figure, might as well take a look at them, compare them side-by-side, -side, and give you all my opinions on why I went with one over the other. So. The top light bar here is the OZ USA HD 20 light bar. So this is a 20 inch light bar. It has 12 larger LEDs and it was used in, like I said, a couple videos ago, I mounted it within the rough country brackets and that filled the lower grill portion on my Ram truck. So what I'm gonna be doing is switching out that light bar with the Z Rhodes 20 inch light bar. This is their single row light bar, which has, ooh, how many LEDs? It's got a lot more LEDs in it, um, but we'll, we'll get into the specifics in a, in a second here. But basically the reason why I'm switching out and going over to the Z Rhodes light bar is because of what I saw with the Z Road LED rear lights that I installed a few videos back. So when I turn those things on, the light output from those six inch LED single row light bars blew my mind. So I figure, all right, let's go check out the 20 inch light bar. I went on their website, looked at the cut sheet for the 20 inch light bar and what I saw was this light bar was actually more lumen output than the OZ bar. And I'll show you in a second why I was concerned about that on the truck. I mean, obviously you want the most lumen output, but because of how these mount behind the grill and they mount behind a plastic piece of mesh, you kind of want to get a little bit crazy with the lumen output because you do lose some by shining that light bar through the grill. So you want to basically top out as, as much lumens as you can afford in a light bar. So. Let's dive right into the light bars and then I'll talk about how we're gonna test it in a second. So top light bar, that is the OZ USA HD20. So like I said, this is a 20 inch light bar. It is a spot and flood combo. So it goes out to the sides as well as a hot spot in the middle. And according to the OZ USA website, this is a 6,000 lumen light bar. All right, so let's remember that value there. So 6,000 lumens. So the total wattage of the top light bar is 120 watts, but you gotta split that up because this light bar is actually two lights in one. So you obviously have the main light, so you got an L a large LED in each of these housings, but you also have these halos here. So each of these halos has a light as well. So within the main light, so like I said, you have um, 12 main LEDs. These are actually seven watt LEDs in here, which comes out to a total of 84 watts on your main light. So keep that in mind, 84 watts coming out of your main light bar. So when you're driving off road and you flip this on, you're getting the equivalent to 84 watts of LEDs coming out of this light bar. Um, I said it was 120 watt total and you get 84 out of here. That means you get 36 watts spread out across these halos. So these halos each have a three watt LED. I think they're tied into the top here and it basically reflects off here. So if you look at my video when I installed this and I installed the DRL circuit, you could basically run two circuits to this light bar, one being the main light bar circuit, so that would be the red wire here, and then you can run the DRL circuit separate, so that would be the white one here. So when I turn my truck on, when my marker lights turned on, these halos would turn on and give it a really cool effect down below. So these little uh, rings would come on, they're not blindingly bright, they're just bright enough to see them. And then when you're driving on the road or driving off road and you need to flip the switch to get the off road lights, that's where you just flip the switch and then all of a sudden power is sent down the red wire and fires up the main lights. So key takeaway here is 84 watts of the main light bar and then 36 watts on the halos for a total wattage of 120. Again, this is all based on specs and based on their website. So I haven't measured any of this stuff. I'm just going off of what I see on, the, on, uh, on their websites. So. The big takeaway is kind of what sets this light bar apart from other ones. And the reason why I went with this originally is because the halos. That's a pretty cool effect. I really like that. And with my OZ pods up top, so my OZ pods also have a DRL in the middle here. So when I turn this guy on, or when I turn my whole truck on, these DRL lights come on as well as down below. And it had a really cool effect with, with the headlight LEDs on the Ram. Okay. So the takeaways on this one is 84 watts and then 36 watts on the halos. The other thing this has is pretty extensive lenses. I don't know if you can see that, but on the sides you got the reflectors where it's basically bending the light out to the side. And then your, your middle six LEDs are dedicated for your spotlight. This is basically magnifying glass and they're focusing that light down the center. So 
when you got the light bar installed on the truck, you're going to get a really hot beam in the middle. And then because of the lenses, it's bending those outside LEDs out to the side. So you're going to get a nice flood on each side. All right. So let's take a look at the Z roads LED. So the Z roads LED light bar is a little bit more plain Jane. So no halos, nothing special like that. No advanced lenses on top of it. But what you'll notice right off the bat is the number of LEDs. And actually the housing is a little bit different as well. So with this light bar, you get a total wattage of 100 watts. So that comes down to, let's see, about five watts per LED. So each one of these LEDs is five watts. So it's a total of 100 watts coming out of this bar. There's 20 LEDs on here. This light bar on paper, or based on the cut sheet, has a lumen output of 9,700 lumens. So you're looking at 9,700 here versus the 6,000 lumens coming out of this guy. So. What does that mean? The lumen per watt on this is way more efficient than the lumen per watt on the OZ bar. So my lumen per watt on this guy is pretty close to 100. So it's 97 lumens per watt. So every bit of power I put in there, I'm getting almost 97 watt or 97 lumens of light but output coming out of it. Whereas with the OZ bar, my lumen per watt is 71. So keep that in mind when you're looking at light bars, look at the lumen output. And I know a lot of times the lumen output's a little bogus on some of these light bars, but you got to take what you can get on the internet and use what you can to kind of make your assessment, but take the lumens divided by the Watts and see where your efficiency at. So that's your light bar efficiency. It's your lumens per watt. So again, with the Z roads light bar, I'm getting close to 90 or I'm getting 97 lumens per watt, which is crazy uh, efficient for a light bar. So pricing OZ USA light bar. That is $180. Zero's light bar, $220. So you're about a $40 difference and you're getting 3,700 more lumens out of this bad boy than you are on the OZ one. But on the OZ one, you get a little bit different lenses, but you also get that halo effect which some people might put a value to it because it is really cool. And honestly, that's why I went with that light bar and wasn't really looking at lumens at that point in time. However, after seeing my rear zero bar or zero LEDs, I decided to go uh, and switch over to the zero's bar because again, their light output on their light bars blows me away. Plus, their customer service is great. Not to say OZ is not. Both both uh, companies are, are awesome to deal with. All right. So as far as how I'm going to test in this video, um, really only testing one thing, and that's measured light output. And I can't test lumen output. That's something you can only do in a lab, really. I don't have the equipment to do that. But what I do have is a light meter. So I made this little guy. So this is my camera tripod, and this is my light meter. So what I'm going to do, set the light meter here, you take the lens off, and that's going to pick up the light meter reading or the light readings. I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to place him at the end of the driveway. Um, again, like I said, this is not scientific by any means, but it's just a way to compare side by side, keeping everything consistent as far as the variables. So I'm going to take that light bar, or I'm sorry, that light meter, and I'm going to put it on my sidewalk right here. And then what I'm gonna do is wire up each of the lights one at a time, lay it on this bar stool, back it up against this little backrest here. That way I'm consistently holding it at the right angle. I'm gonna shoot that light bar down at the, um, the light meter and we're gonna measure the maximum light output. Now what that'll also allow us to do is look at the side sweep on the light bar. So my wife's car is off to the side here. So we'll see how much those light bars carry off to the side. Um, and then we'll see how far it carries and see if I hit my neighbor's house with it. I'm pretty sure I will. I had one on the other night. But um, again, we're going to measure the light meter reading at the end of the driveway, which will give us the maximum light output. Um, and on, an, on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be measuring things in foot candles. That's just what I'm used to measuring things with at work. So we're going to go with that. Like I said, you can't use a light meter like this to measure lumen output. It's just not efficient. It's not accurate at all. So we're going to measure things in foot candles and really all I'm trying to prove here is or all I'm trying to test here is which one is brighter from a foot candle perspective. It's not scientific. The foot candles down down there does not necessarily equate to the exact number of lumens that it's going to be shining out. But if I keep this at the same distance, if I put both light bars in the same location in front of my truck and shine them down there, I should be able to say which one's brighter given my test apparatus. Okay, a little dark to see exactly what I'm doing here, but that works out good for our light level uh, metering. So just go with it for now. I'll turn my light on. We'll see if that helps. So I just wanted to show you kind of how I have everything hooked up here. So I have the light bar right here. 
Again, we're going to start with the OZ one. It's sitting on a bar stool, and the bar stool is leaning up against my grill. But what that allows me to do is kind of reference off of the back here. So there's a backrest, and I'll just basically put the light up in there, and I can move it up and down. Um, we have our light meter way down at the end of the driveway, so right about here. I'm going to go down there and set that on max. That way, once I hit it with the light, it'll keep measuring the, the maximum amount of light output that it's picking up, so we can get a good, accurate measurement here. And then as far as the wire, so again, I said I have my trigger four plus here and I just basically unplugged my, my first channel light. So I got a 30 amp circuit here and I took that power and I ran it right into the light bar. So with the OZ bar, let's go put that hood down. With the OZ bar, we're gonna start with just using the main beam. I did not plug in the DRL beam. I will do that in a second so you can see what that looks like. So I just taped off that terminal. So right now I'm just running the positive and negative, which will give me the main beam, which will turn on the 84 watts of lights. Then we'll go ahead and turn that guy on, set that at max, and measure the peak output at, I think that's what, 25, 30 feet. And then what we could look at is the spread and everything and how hot the hot spot is, not kind of move the light around so we can get a good reference point. But let me go get that guy turned on and then get some power run to the light and then we should be good to go. All right, so I got my truck on, ready to go. I have my trigger switch pulled out of my truck. Let's go ahead and fire up that light bar. So there you go. Uh, we can move it around a little bit. So I have the light meter down there at the end of the driveway. It's garbage night, so mind the garbage recycling bin. But I'm hitting the light meter right now with like the hot portion of the beam. So that'll give us our maximum light output measurement on the light bar itself. But I'll move it down we can take a look at the spread. So it's really um, heavy in the middle. So this light bar definitely does shine pretty heavy in the middle. Um, like I said, this has got those lenses and it's made to spread out the light. But you can see it really not spreading out too much. So it's really focused in the middle. So if you're looking for a spotlight, this is the one to go with. So let's go ahead and take a look at the light meter and see where this guy lit up. Let me turn this off so I stop blinding my neighbors. Let's go take a look at the light bar or the light meter. Okay, so I have this on the range 400 for measuring foot candles because I was overloading it when I was at 40. So with this measurement right now, we're measuring 40.2 is the max light output coming out of the OZ light bar at this range. So that was hitting it multiple times with the with the hot spot of the light bar. So let's go ahead and get the Z Roads light bar hooked up and we could measure that guy and see how these compare. Okay, just for kicks, I went ahead and wired up the DRL lights on the light bar. So let's go ahead and turn those on. So like I said, it's not blinding light. You can still see the shape of it, which means it's not shining too bright. Let's see if we can get off this side. Yeah, you can see it's basically glowing on the ridge of the light. And that's what's giving it that ambient look. But I mean, if you back up, it's about as bright as the DRL lights on the Ram OEM headlights. So anyway, figured I'd show that to you. Um, it looks like the LEDs are actually in the corners here. So you got one here, two, three, one there, there, and throughout the light bar. So anyway, I just wanted to show you how that looks. So it's basically lighting up the outside of the light. And then once you turn on the other light bar, the main beams light up. So let's go ahead and get the Z-Roads light bar plugged in here and get that measuring on the light meter. Okay, so we have the Z-Roads light bar hooked up, ready to go. Got my truck turned on, got my trigger wireless switch here. Good to go. Remember, this is 100 watts on paper in the cut sheet. This is 100 watts with a total light output of 9,700 lumens. So again, we're not measuring lumens, we're just measuring how bright it is at that measuring point down there. I didn't move the light meter. I have it set on max right now and all the same ranges and everything. So this will give us a comparison. I wouldn't really trust the number too much just by the basis of if one number is higher than the other, that means that light bar is brighter. But also what I want to show you here is the light pattern compared to the OZ one. So if you remember the OZ one was a bit patchy, let's go ahead and fire up the Z roads bar. And what you'll see right away is how consistent the uh, light pattern is coming out of here and I, I believe that is because the LEDs are actually using the housing to reflect and they're not using the lens. Now what you'll also notice is it's a very rounded light because this light bar doesn't have an up or down so uh, what you might lose is a lot of light going up whereas the OZ one does try to guide some of that light down to where it's usable. So let's hit our meter here with the hotspot a couple times. Remember it's set on max, so it's basically just gonna keep reading the max level and, and hold it there until we're done. 
But again, what you'll see here is a super consistent light bar. So when it's mounted in my RAM, it'll be about that high. Um, but that, that extra output you're seeing here and that extra spread and that consistent spread is exactly what I needed coming out of that lower portion because, here, let's use this. Uh, you can see that mesh there blocks some of the light coming out of there. Not all of it, but it does block enough to make an impact on the light output. So if you can err on the side of throwing too much lumens in there, then you're gonna be good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the light meter. Okay, so we are about 10 foot candles brighter from about 30 feet away using the Z-Roads light versus the OZ light bar. So we are definitely getting a brighter light with the Z-Roads versus the OZ. Also what you notice is the spread on the Z-Roads was much more consistent versus the OZ where it's kind of sp spotty. Um, but again, going back to the OZ bar, you get that the nice quality of the halos. So if the halos are something that you favor, by all means, that's the light bar for you and you can give up some lumens on it. If you're looking for just straight lumen output, then maybe the Z-Rhodes is for you. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the Z-Rhodes on the Rebel and sport that one for a little while. But let's go ahead and get those light bars back side by side and, and quickly run through the numbers on each of them and the results. All right, so all things considered, what do you think? Are you a Z-Rhodes fan or are you an OZ fan? Um, just the big takeaway from this, again, I, and I cannot say this enough, this is not very scientific. This is just me with a light meter at the end of my driveway, just trying to do some sort of consistent measurement just to see from some sort of baseline which light bar is gonna be brighter. And obviously the Z-Rose one, uh, almost by a factor of 10 over the OZ light bar. The OZ light bar, the benefits here are you're gonna get uh, a lot more blockage from that light going up. So the, the lens itself, so you can kind of see the lens itself tries to guide as much of that light down, um, but it does have a little bit of a patchy light output compared to the z Rhodes bar, whereas the z Rhodes bar uses the housing itself to direct the light. So the center is just a solid, and then it is rippled, I guess, on the edge, so it directs some of that light out. And what that gave us is a very consistent spread in front. However, because there's nothing going on on the top of this light bar, it also kicks light up, so you might be wasting some of those lumens, whereas if you had a little bit better of a lens on the front of this, you might have been able to guide some of that stuff down. So, 100 watts, 97 lumens per watt, 84 watts, and, ooh, what was that number? Um, 71 lumens per watt on the OZ light bar. But you also get the benefit of the halo rings, and, and I showed you what those look like once they're plugged in. So what are you? Are you a Z-Roads fan, OZ fan? You don't care, you just want a light bar, you just want something up front to give you some light. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Again, this is my first attempt at doing a side-by-side. -side. Like I said, not trying to put any product on blast. I just happen to have a 20-inch light bar from both these companies and figure why not do a little side-by-side -side with there. I have some of the equipment and I could basically BS my way through pretending like I know what I'm doing here. But again, just wanted to prove that, hey, this light bar is pretty bright. This one also has a cool feature of the Halo light bars. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and get this bad boy installed on the truck and enjoy some 3,700 extra lumens now on my front light bar. But I appreciate it, thank you very much. Definitely subscribe, leave your comment below. What do you think of the light bars? Is there another comparison you wanna see me do? I know I have an exhaust one coming soon coming soon on the truck, but is there any other side-by-side -side comparisons you wanna see on these new Rams? Um, with that said, I also wanna do a quick shout out to the guys at Soul Fifth Gen. So I'm gonna leave a description, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave a link to their YouTube video down below. They're doing some awesome stuff. They are uh, pretty much the go-to place on Instagram for uh, sharing uh, Fifth Gen truck pictures. They've been posting some pretty crazy ones lately. They themselves also own Fifth Gen trucks, I think a white and a black Ram. Um, but again, check them out. They share some awesome content. They also have a YouTube page. Like I said, I'm gonna leave a, or a link to their webpage down in the description below. But with that said, that is my side-by-side -side comparison of the two 20-inch light bars. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it.